Now, now the, the, the country still has a huge shortage of real development projects that should catalyze the country into strong industrialization to create jobs and leapfrog the country into a developed economy. So what are the missing links? Uh, Kwari Booker is my guest on this the conversation tonight. He's a former chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Uh, he is also on the board of the Development Bank of Nigeria, as well as the chairman of Sunu Assurance uh, PLC. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for coming through. We appreciate uh, making it tonight. Good evening, Boston. Thank you so, thank you so much. We appreciate uh, this uh, as a Friday. So uh, give me your thoughts regarding when we talk about development finance in Nigeria from a policy point of view. Uh, from a policy perspective, uh, development finance um, come in many ways. However, for a nation to develop, it needs to finance some of the basic infrastructure. And by that, I do not necessarily mean just um, the hard infrastructure, but also the soft infrastructure, uh, education, entrepreneurship, uh, innovation and creativity. All of those require investments. So in many instances, investments can come from various avenues. One, the government itself, but the government has limited resources. Therefore, the government needs to have policies that would encourage the private sector to bring in the needed investments in those uh, infrastructural investments that would be the accelerator to development. So essentially, what we need in this country are institutions such as the Development Bank, for example, that you've mentioned, uh, and many other entities that would basically as an ecosystem would raise the funds, sometimes from outside, and uh, bring in uh, to bear. Uh, in regards to Development Bank itself, the main focus of Development Bank is the MSME space, micro, small, and medium enterprises, with particular emphasis to women-owned uh, businesses. Now, we can also extend it out to entities like Bank of Industry, uh, Bank of Agri and all of that. But in the case of Development Bank, it was put on a governance pedestal that even though the government is an investor, the governance structure of the institution is world class, is made in such a manner that foreign investors, such as the European Investment Bank, Africa Development Bank, uh, AFW of France, uh, KPW, of uh, Germany were all around the table, in including IFC uh, and our investment arm of the World Bank. But the, for the entire national development priorities, I think what we need to do is to involve ourselves in some of the basics, foundational element, which is the key is in investing in education, in ICT, innovation, entrepreneurship, all of those are going to be the catalysts that will drive a nation's developmental trajectory. The, the development uh, finance, development projects, folks are looking forward to big projects that can create jobs, that can leapfrog the economy, jobs in the thousands and hundreds of thousands. Uh, how do we build this type of projects? If you look at countries such as Rwanda, you look at Egypt, for example, uh, how, what lessons can we on board from there? Uh, in the case of Rwanda, for example, there is an immense uh, investment in capacity building, meaning that even the people that are going to be involved in the execution of the project, so they have certain key components of skills that they bring to bear to those ex to the execution of the project. So proper project planning, uh, uh, exceptionally uh, driven project management and project execution uh, in all the projects they, they are involved in. In most instances, in the case of Rwanda, and to a certain extent, even in Egypt, what happens is that you find that they execute projects on time, at least uh, either 
in, within the budget scope or slightly over. But, but in most instances, you find that those projects have a more uh, impact on the average person. So th therefore, it's not white elephants when we see a project being done somewhere else and somebody copies it. It's more of how can this impact uh, the average citizen. And it is from that that they derive the execution of some of those fundamental projects. Where is that missing link, therefore, for Nigeria, in which uh, the country is littered with so many white elephant projects? Uh, I think the major problem that we have in Nigeria, and in some cases I ask the question, why are we so afflicted with the you know, ideas of coming up with so many white elephant projects without necessarily having uh, to even complete them. Uh, uh, throughout my adult life, I have seen so many things that are started in Nigeria that either end up being truncated, not completed, or we move on to something else altogether. Uh, if we were to execute and complete the projects that have been started by previous government, we may probably go on for years just on what had been started but uncompleted. Now, the game is that there has to be a discipline to that, and the discipline is in the excellence of execution. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have that. And the other thing is that the, um, the level of corruption involved in conceiving and execution of the project and even if you look at the budgets, some of them are just so far-fetched that um, the average project in another part of Africa, for example, uh, if the similar project is going to be undertaken in Nigeria, it might be 2x or 3x. Now, all of those are issues that we need to address. Therefore, there has to be transparency in the costing and the execution of the projects. And the major problem is that somebody would start a project and governments change and they will drop everything and then two years later they go back and restart the thing by then that same project may be two or three x bloated than where we found it so all of those practices need to be stopped the reason is that people are not being held accountable uh, or, or, you know, th those that have been given the responsibility to execute the projects are not held to account. And even though we practice democracy, the voters do not necessarily also punish a government that had failed in executions of pro execution of projects. Mm -hmm. So all of those conspire to put us where we are today. We've had different types of development uh, banks and development finance institutions in Nigeria, yet we've not been able to attract big names into the countries, such as the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, European Investment Bank, the Arab Development Bank. They're not very heavy with boots on the ground in Nigeria. How can we attract them? Uh, they are usually what you might call fund of funds. They do not necessarily go in there to do the execution element for it. Uh, I know that, for example, in uh, Development Bank, we do get funds from EIB, uh, uh, which is European Investment Bank, uh, but it is for us to own land, and we only own land to other financial institutions, whether it is microfinance banks or commercial banks that would necessarily then be the on lenders to those uh, small, medium uh, enterprises in execution of their projects. Now, for the last large infrastructural projects in Nigeria, I, I, I think one of the uh, uh, companies that was actually conceived by the central bank, and which I believe has now taken off, is the InfraCo. Um, the idea behind InfraCo, where government had already put a trillion naira, and uh, there is an expectation of another two trillion naira equivalent in hard currencies that would be coming in from the, uh, the likes of uh, European Investment Bank and others would necessarily be the kind of funds, patient capital that is needed for long-term projects such as railways, uh, roads, um, dams, things that take years to execute. 
uh, and therefore InfraCore would be the lender to smaller infrastructural funds. I, I know a friend who actually has started one of the very first uh, privately owned Nigerian infrastructure fund. Uh, and many entities of similar nature are coming into the uh, economic uh, ecosystem and they would then be the catalyst in driving longer term or longer gestation mm -hmm. uh, projects that would take a bit long timeline for them to start generating or yielding right. revenues. Um, now, that sort of projects do require patient capital, and I believe that the InfraCore, as it's being uh, constituted, okay. is supposed to do that. Uh, the, of course, the, the, the result is going to be what we would sit and watch and see if 10 years from now they will make an impact to the Thank economy. You. Uh, thank you so much, uh, and we appreciate your insights as always on the show tonight. Kyrie Buka, former chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group and board member, Development Bank of Nigeria, and also the chairman of First Assurance.